morning, good morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Divine Intel. This is your host, brother and friend, Mr. B. I was woke up by <laughs> prophetess uh, Rosaline Solomon, which I have an uh, honor again to have her on my show. And <laughs> I did not recognize her. And I thought, she asked me, do you remember me? I said, like, no. <laughs> You know, I said, yeah, I wasn't doing your show. I was like, oh my goodness, there's a prophet Solomon. And I was like, you know, I was like, my God, what did I just say? I said, I don't remember her. Oh my goodness. So she come out. We were like talking on the phone. And all of a sudden, uh, she started remember stuff that she'd been saying uh, that actually prophesied a long time ago. Not, not, not too long ago, but I thought I should do a show for the missing prophecies that we don't know about it. We don't know about uh, the prophecies that, that were missing that she probably forgot to mention on our last show. Um, basically because, you know, Prophet, uh, Prophet Solomon basically baptized our show. This is my show because the name of my show is because, you know, she baptized it. And I did. So... We're going to talk about the missing prophecies, and we're going to talk about what's coming. I just had a breaking news, and I'm going to bring it, not that I care about it, but I want uh, my guest to, to give her opinion what I just read, okay? So, let's talk about first, let's talk about first the breaking news that I got. According to a, one of my jets, let's see, where is this? Uh, according to one of my jets, Mr. Debbie Schmidt has been ordered to step aside, meaning has been ordered to, to retire. And people are asking, why now? So, assumingly, you know, because this man alleged to have ties with the White House. This man alleged to have ties with the Family Dragon. This is the man, the main guy that talk about the Family Dragon. And what I've been saying all the time is, Dragon is the enemy of God. And that's the reason why, one of the reasons that I've been told that I've been attacked is because of that. That uh, I bring in the name of my Lord over all the family dragons. I don't care what color they are. Because he's in power. He's in control. Nobody. My Lord does not take credit for anybody else. He doesn't share his glory with anybody else. We know that. And, and that's the reason why they're attacking me. So now Mr. Smith has retired. Has Basically he's no longer going to talk about the RB. And... People are saying this is a signal of the reset. Is this a signal for the RB? So I'm gonna I wanna have my uh, guest her opinion. Apostle, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you so much for uh, for being here with me. Um, You're so, welcome. So, what do you think about it, Apostle? Uh, well, I was praying as you was. Uh, uh, talking about it to see what the father said and he said yes it's true he's retiring but the reason why he's retiring he the, what he's saying is not the real reason why he's retiring and then the Lord said something else and I said God if you want me to say this I'll say it if you don't just rid on my mouth so here it go <laughs> so the Lord said he is, is moving aside because they're trying to bring out the RV but he did not give me a day of time. And I said, Father, I don't want to say this to the people and mm -hmm. they get hope and blame it on me. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Right away. And so the Father did not give me a time. He just said, yes, he's been told to move to the side, but the reason that he's giving people is not true. And it's because they're trying to set the RV. That's what he just said. Oh, okay. In Yeshua's got name. Yes. Yeshua Jesus' name. Okay. But I have no time frame. Okay, got it. So this is interesting because, um, you know, um, 
I have a feeling. This is just my feeling. This is just my humble opinion. It's not because I hate that man. No, I hate what he stands for. No, I don't hate him. But I hate what yeah, he stands for. He's got a lot of people. <laughs> yes. Um, I hate what he stands for because he's misleading, and he called himself a Christian. He's misleading his people. That's what I hate about him. Okay? But I don't hate him. Um, what I have a feeling, this is my humble opinion, is because the FBI is after him. Yeah, that could be it too. You know, the FBI is after him, and we know that when things are coming very close for the RB, all the world will know about him and will know what he was standing for because the enemy of God are the dragons. Okay? Mm -hmm. There is no coincidence that this family, this royalty, look at look, royalty family, is yeah. been is been Asian. taking the part, is been taking the part of my Lord. And without him, there will be no RB. And a lot of people are praising the family as the holy family. The mm -hmm. elders, the grandfathers. Mm -hmm. And this is what I got myself into a big problem. Because when the time that I repeated seven times Israel is forever, mm -hmm. something to cover me. And, and my Lord told me, I want you to scream from the top of your lungs and tell everybody that I am... I am the king of the RB. I am the God of the RB. Nothing's mm -hmm. going to happen unless I say so. So since I, since I said it, since I said it openly with a lot of anger, and thank you for, thank you for the apostle, because she told me stuff that really affect me uh, because I had a lot of anger inside of me. And I didn't know. But... Um, The anger, like she said, you know, is probably the anger of God because God doesn't, God is our, our, our Lord is a very jealous Lord, you know, and, and, and he was manifesting within me. And, and after I, I realized that I pray a lot, just like the pastor asked me to do. And after that, all the anger, all the anger went gone. It was gone. So now we've seen these things happening. And just like I told you yesterday, guys, we know that this thing is about to happen. When? I don't know. I don't know. And even if I knew, mm -hmm. I will never tell you. I've been saying this all the time. Even if I knew, I will never tell you. Okay? So, this is something really big. I hope that you guys are listening to my show. There's only, well, they're coming out now. They're probably surprised because I came out very early on my show. <laughs> <laughs> and I have the prophets, uh, the, 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 uh, the baptized, the baptized prophet to that basically is my show is all about. And I'm honored to have her again. So let's talk about the prophecies, the missing prophecies that um, Rosaline, uh, Apostle Rosaline uh, Solomon missed to tell us. And it's beautiful. Listen to her, please. So, Apostle... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apostle, yeah. tell us about tell us about the uh, the prophecy that you mentioned actually last year, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and you mentioned about Donald Trump. Please tell my people about that that prophecy. The first, I want to say I wasn't meant to be on this show today, <laughs> but for the past five or six days, the Lord has been having on my mind to call Benny his address because he wants me to send Benny a couple of my books to help him with his walk. So, I, you know, I keep forgetting to do it, and it's the time frame. So, finally, I said, okay, Daddy, I'm going to wait until 12 o'clock and do it today. So, you know, I'm talking to Benny, and then, you know, we start talking about other things, and then the next thing you know, he, he's like, oh, well, I was going to do a show today, but you mind being on the cell for a few minutes? I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, Benny and the Lord is setting me up. <laughs> But I had told Benny, you know, I was just telling Benny about things that, that I had, I don't really talk about. And so I said, Benny, I said, God is setting me up today. I said, you're setting me up today. So, so <clears throat> excuse me. So <laughs> I wasn't prepared. But okay. what I was telling Benny was um, 
it's on my prosthetic voice if you should mention YouTube channel. I just don't know which video it is because I, I I started putting videos back up there again, I think in uh, August or September. So anyway, one of the videos, it's about, you know, it has Donald Trump naming it. And I think it talks about him making the announcement. But I had a vision. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat been bothering me. One second. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I had a vision that um, Donald Trump was about to sign this big piece of paper. It was like, I think, between 7.5 and 8.11 piece of paper, and it was white. And it was on his desk, and he was about to sign it. And all these people were, like, around him, and they were laughing at him vigorously. And he signed the paper, and he put it in his hand, and he put his right hand straight up, and and and, and he said, "See, I did it, I did it," you know. And people were looking at him like they couldn't believe they were marvelous that he did it, and, and and they thought he couldn't do it, and he did it. So he's gonna sign some type of document, and it's gonna be some kind of controversy around it, and they're gonna think that he's not gonna be able to pull it through, and he's going to do it. <laughs> and then the Lord told me last year that uh, he was, Donald Trump was going to, and that's on one of my videos too on the channel, that um, Donald Trump was going to make an announcement about Iraq and that it was going to make a lot of people mad in America. So then I woke up and I was like, God, why don't the people in America get mad at Donald Trump? And I said, it must have something to do with Iraq currency. You know, I was like, you know, maybe people you know, that didn't believe it are going to be upset that they didn't believe it, that they, you know, been duped. And maybe some of the people who sold it back or gave it back <clears throat> are going to be mad because they gave it back and they didn't believe it. And um, the Lord never said anything. He just stayed quiet on that. That was just my assumption. But he's going to make an announcement about Iraq and it's going to make people in America mad. There's agreement. There's a meeting that's going to happen between him and the government assistance in Iraq. And then it's going to come out after the meeting is done and paperwork has signed and agreements or whatever it's going to be. And it's going to make um, some American people mad. Then I was telling them, uh, Penny about um, three proper friends I have that are very close to me. They have visions between 2015 and 2016. Um, they, all three was watching TV and the newscaster came on and said that, um, Iraq IV has happened. And one of them said, the newscaster said he couldn't believe it. He thought it was a pyramid scheme. And then one of them in the background of watching the news saw people scattering. Some people were trying to get on planes and trains to get back to, to their to, to their home where their money was, but I guess to trade it in. And then some people were like upset because they didn't you know, they were told it was a parent scheme, it was a scam and, and then some people were just like yelling in one of the visions that the girl, one of my friends had, um, saying, why now, why now? And even the newscaster was saying, why now? And he was, one of them was saying the newscaster was shocked that it had happened, but it was like so much chaos in, in, in these visions. And then me, myself, I was supposed to go to Great Britain last year and teach, but I didn't go because of such terrorism over there. But, you know, I know eventually God's going to send me. I'm going to have to go. But uh, anyway, but I had had a vision in 2016. This was before I knew I was going to go, supposed to go to Great Britain. And I had a vision. I was in Great Britain. And a white man came to me. And he called my name straight out. And he said, the uh, RV has happened. The, the money, the uh, he said, the currency with an S has happened, they are reviling. And I was like, they're reviling? And he said, yeah. And I was like, wow. And so I saw that vision twice in 2016 of me being in Great Britain and someone coming to me telling me that. Now, I didn't know I was supposed to go to Great Britain until the beginning of January. I had those two visions in the summer of July. Now, mind you, I never made it to Great Britain because, uh, you know, I had got their currency and everything. I took it back. <laughs> and they had too many terror attacks going on back then, so I just didn't want to go. So um, I have no idea when I'm going to Great Britain. I have no plans to go to Great Britain in the next year or two. I don't. So 
I know the Lord told me that this thing was supposed to happen two years ago. Why God chooses me to talk to me about this currency thing? Because I really don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> yeah. But I don't well, know uh, why God talks to me about it. God talks to me about a lot of things I don't want nothing to do with. Yes. <laughs> okay, so, but, but, so my... my, my huh? uh, what I called my attention was I was, I was talking to you on the phone is that uh, everybody was expecting, is still expecting, an announcement from a body. But the announcement is not going to be from a body. It's going to be for Trump. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be for Trump. And, that's, you know, he, it's a lot of things that have happened through Trump and it's going to happen. It's going to wow. happen. Because the Lord told me, I gave a prophecy. I don't know which video is on. Or maybe on Periscope, I gave it on. Um, before he won, I mean, when he won, and I told them, the Lord said that we have to pray to keep him in because the, the four to eight years he's going to be in are going to be prosperity years for America, mm-hmm. and that we have to pray to keep him in. And it's like God giving us an extension because if another president would have got in there, we could have could have been a war, but that's what it was edging to. So mm-hmm. the Lord said we have to keep pray yeah. that he makes it through his four years and that he runs again because if he gets worn out he's not going to run again yeah. so we not only have to pray to keep him alive to keep him in his seat we have to pray he makes it through the four years and then the next four years yes. you know it doesn't matter how many people are attacking you about to i mean i, I am a a, a, a a black female and when I get around my people <laughs> oh. and I start telling them how Trump is, you know, doing good oh to me, God. you know, he he needs to control his mouth. It's true, you know. Yeah. He just he doesn't care. But he needs to, you know, just take for his words. But overall he's doing a pretty good job to me and, and they attack me. And I don't care. I don't yeah. care. And then yeah. I tell them, you know, prophecies God tell me, then they shut up because they see the prophecies you know, I come in the past. So well, you know that you. our minorities, mm-hmm. uh, minorities in general, we are being led mm-hmm. to know that uh, you know that uh, white people are the evil, and the Republicans are the racist, and <laughs> Democrats are the good guys. So you know, don't expect you know to be accepted because I myself, I'm the sellout. I'm a coon according to many of these people. You know because wow. I. You know, so because I I support my president, and what well, why should I be uh, supported when he was? Oh, I've been called a racist by my people because Look, <laughs> of what I tell them. The Lord said yeah. about him, they call me racist. Oh. I'm like, how can I be a racist? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, but you know that this is the this is the uh, this is the thing that we have to go through it in order to stand for the truth. And I'm so glad that that we talk about on the phone. Um, I was like, I was half uh, asleep, okay? And when she called me, I was like, uh, she goes, do you remember me? I said, no. And she like, I was on the show. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Are you probably no. And I was like, oh my God. Because <laughs> I wasn't, you know, I was just waking up. I was just waking up. And, um, and uh, I had this wonderful conversation with her. But look, uh, there's another thing I want to touch. Mm-hmm. Last time that you were on my show, mm-hmm. my fake news show, my fake news show page was down. Remember that? Right. Guess right. what happened now? It was it's uh-huh. down. Like they put it down again. Why? I don't know. <laughs> A lot of people. Wait, are when coming. did they put it down again? Uh, the, 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 yesterday. I couldn't get in. Again, they disabled what? it. Yes, they disabled it. I got the other one. I got the Divine Intel page. But many of the people that I got, because I got over three thousand on my uh, on my uh, the fake news show page. Things. Yes, I got mm-hmm. over three thousand. Some of them are still moving out to my new page, but they haven't even you know terminated to migrate to my to my old uh, to my new page. But you know, is is isn't that something? Isn't that something? You that... know what? You know, maybe it has something. Maybe it has something to do with. With the Smith guy, because this is why I'm saying the Lord mm-hmm. said that yes, he is leaving, but the reason why is he's saying it's not the truth, and that they're setting trying to set up for the RV. Maybe because you talk about that RV a lot, and you know they monitor yes. the Facebook pages and the FBI monitors. So yes. maybe because you talk about it a lot, you have good intel. Because that's one thing the Lord told me about you. 
when I first watched mm-hmm. the first couple of shows about you, and I had told Brother Johnny about you, I said, Johnny, do you know him? And Johnny's like, no, never heard of him. I said, well, he thinks extremely highly of you because he's always mentioning you. Yes. And I said, God said, his intel is true. And he was like, really? And he was no, like, oh, oh, okay, I'm going to go check him out. So, so your intel on, on that Facebook, it, it could be why they're messing with you. Yeah, uh, and, and, you know, for me, Prophet Johnny is an inspiration. You know, he's been so mm-hmm. young. He's not, I don't, how old is Johnny? He ain't that young, trust me. <laughs> yeah, he's young, right? He's very young. Being so young. No, he's not. He's, oh, he's, he's not? not very young at all. Are you serious? <laughs> he looks so young. No, he's not. He's not in his 20s or his 30s. Are you serious? Oh, <laughs> he my. He just looks like it. He looks like it. Oh, my God. <laughs> he going to get me for telling. <laughs> But you know what? He's an inspiration. That man is an inspiration. I have always said he always nailed it because he's also a prophet. You know, he's yeah. a financial prophet. He has made yeah. a lot of people yeah. rich. Yeah. I mean, that's mm-hmm. a blessing. Mm-hmm. He has made a lot of people rich. And mm-hmm. he doesn't even, look, the guy, is, the man is so anointed that even mm-hmm. when he mentioned the word, you know, down there, the word down there, he goes, H e l a l. He doesn't even mention the word that, because <laughs> he doesn't. He's very. He's very afraid of my Lord. You know, I know mm-hmm. that people are afraid of my Lord. We need to be afraid of Him because by being afraid of Him, we are going to be in the righteousness path. Okay, mm-hmm. we're not gonna do the things that He doesn't like it. You know, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and that's the reason why I, it was an inspiration for me. I was like, you know what? This guy is, he nails it all the time. I will play his uh, show on my show because that was basically the, the only thing I needed. I stopped following Iraq at all. I stopped following because I knew they were corrupted. They were filthy corrupt. And I will never uh, uh, follow corruption. Never. So I basically di- came back. What I did four years ago, talking about the financial system and the break in the financial system and how Bitcoin, through their profits, are saying that it's going to collapse the financial system. So we know that the destroyer is going to be Bitcoin. And you also mentioned it too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you also mentioned it, right? The Bitcoin that is going to be, it was going to collapse. Oh, the Bitcoin prophecy has come to pass. Because I think it's down to 9000 or 10000 now. Yeah. So that has come to pass. Yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, the Lord told me. Yeah. And uh, so we are waiting for the innovation, the new thing. So that's what we're... The last thing that I got yesterday I mentioned is that uh, we are waiting for the banks to announce, make an announcement. And I'm not, mm-hmm. allowed, I'm not allowed to tell you what kind of announcements are they. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mention, but we need to wait. We need to wait those announcements, okay? But we need yeah, there to, is gonna be changes in the banking system because yes. that's in my prophecy book. Yes, yes, I know you you mentioned yeah. that a long time ago. Yes, and um, mm-hmm. and so as you can see, guys, um, I'm not gonna take too much time because everybody's gonna be concentrating the game. Which are also going to be concentrated because I enjoy the game. <laughs> Only one game. I don't follow fo- football. I'm Latino. Yeah, I don't follow so football. <laughs> I don't follow football. I'm Latino. I follow soccer. I don't follow any sport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't follow no sport? Okay. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe, uh, I don't know. I may, that's what I do. But, you know, am I, uh, do, I, do I support what they do? No, I don't. You know, I think uh, we, sh- we should. Uh, and I really believe that after the RB, the new elite, all of you are the new elite, will change and go and bring us back to morality in the country. And I really hope that you guys help that. Okay? I really help. And, and I just and I just want to say that 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 it is going to happen for Iraq because they're in the Bible. Yeah. And it says they're supposed to prosper for a season. And they can't prosper until their money comes up. Until their money comes up, there's a press nation. So mm-hmm. the press nation can never prosper. So the money has to come up. When no one knows what God, but, and, you know, maybe the people who are planning it, but it has to come up, you know. And um, before I go, Benny, can I pray for your viewers? Yes, please, please. Okay. 
I'm going to pray because um, I, I know, you know, a lot of people are going through stuff right now. You know, some people leave their homes, yes. their apartments, they're, you know, barely can feed themselves, yes. you know, going, losing, being evicted, you know, all kinds of things are happening right now. And you see on the news how the economy is getting better, which it is because of Trump, but it's just not heaven. Yes. You know, reached, you know, as many people as it should. So, I just want to pray a corporate prayer over everyone who's listening, who will listen in the archives on speaker box and on uh, YouTube or however you listen to it. Uh, I just lift everyone up who's truly of the Lord. If you're not of the Lord, you need to come over because these kind of prayers are not going to affect you if you're not truly submissive and succumb to the Lord. There are some prayers that will be answered by a sinner or a person who doesn't truly honor God, but then there's prayers that God reserves just for the ones who are truly of him. This is why some people suffer because they're not of God. And he allows the enemy mm-hmm. to drain and take everything from them so they can come to him. So this prayer is for anyone who's truly of the Lord and who wants to become truly of the Lord. I'm praying this corporate prayer of finance over the people. So, Father, in the name of Shabbat Shalom, God binds up every follower in the air, every high principality, sun, fallen angel, or creation of you in the air. I bind up the throne sitting in the air, in the astral realm. I bind up the thrones that are on this earth. I bind up the wickedness that walk in high places, the powers that be, Father God, anything else that can interfere or hinder or try to stop or catch my prayer to prevent it from reaching a rock and busting, turning it to mist into a sweet infant and to your nose, Father God, in his name, and I still this in the blood is sure. I bind them up, and when the expiration time of binding stops, they are not to look to the back, to the right, to the left, or underneath. They'll go straight to the foot of the Messiah, and if they try to stop and, and curb another way, the angels, the warrior angels, will take them and throw them in the after darkness, and that's where they'll stay until the judgment day. And I cut all ley lines and cords of all witches flying around in my atmosphere right now that could be trying to hinder this prayer. I touch cords and your ley lines drop to the ground, and that's where you will stay. You will never be riding up again in your shoes, name. And I ask the angels to come and arrest them right now and take them to the feet of your shoes. They refuse, they throw them into after darkness and to their judgment day in Yeshua's name. Amen. Father, I cover this entire prayer with the blood of Yeshua and this radio show and the host being he will send myself anything to do with us, anyone who's listening and anything to do with them that truly is you. And if there is any witches or satanic cultic people infiltrating this line, I send fire to you right now in Yeshua's name. Any snakes that's listening, I cut your head off right now in your shoes name and i throw it into fire in your shoes name father god your people are tired they are suffering financially all kinds of terrible things are happening to them the enemy is doing all kinds of things you told me the enemy is busy and deceiving because of all the money and blessings and miracles you have been giving and that you are going to give he's trying to drag people, trying to make people think you're not there for them, trying to make people think that you don't love them, Father God. He's trying to get them to focus more on their situation than on you because the key to come out of the situation is to focus on you like your word says, keep your faith like play on me and don't be moved, saith the Lord. So, Father God, I pray that you blow a fresh wind as I blow. Amen, amen. A fresh wind into your people, Father God. A fresh wind into the, the pocketbooks, the wallets, their bank accounts, their jobs, their paycheck, anything where they're finance, Father. I ask you to blow a fresh wind, a fresh uplifting wind. And I ask you to go to send the angels, the, the financial angels that help govern over your treasure with the Ruhaka dish to the east, south, north, and west and shut up any horn that are yelling at these people. Shut up any ancestral demons that are using ancestral access and curses to come against these people and cancel them out with the blood of Yeshua Mashiach. And help your people who are at the brink of being homeless, who are at the brink of being evicted, who 
on the brink that don't have even not a couple in their fridge ready to eat, who are on the brink of losing their job or they're on unemployment and they don't get enough or the unemployment is running out or if they're on public assistance and that's running out. Whatever issues they are having, Father God, I ask you to lift them up financially because your word says a child of God, God shouldn't, will never beg. Never beg, and a child of God should not be homeless and face with homelessness, Father God. And if there's any reason in anyone's life who's listening to the dissonant voice as to why these things are happening to them, then show them the legal right that the enemy has so that they may repent and take it, take it from the enemy. Or if it's an ancestral issue, show them, Father, or put someone in their life or give it to them in the scripture, in a vision, in a dream, so that they may take it back from the enemy so he will not have any right to destroy them or come against their fight. Father, but you are the sovereign God. You are the permissive will God. So, Father, I ask you to take your sovereign will and your permissive will and override Satan, because Satan is your slave. Satan is in the palm of your hand to do with what you want to do with, not the other way around. So, I ask you to override him in the spirit realm, because you're God. You said your mercy is reserved for who you want. So I ask you to have mercy on your people today, Father, and override what the enemy is doing to your yes, people, Father, yes, so they don't have to yes, suffer anymore, Father yes, God, amen, amen. and bring the sun out and remove the clouds in their life in Yeshua's name and give them streets of joy so that they may carry the fire banner, as it says in the Bible, and show the heathen, see what my God has done for me. So that the heathens will come upon you, Father God, in Yeshua's name. And I bless your name, Father, because I know you're going to answer me, Father. I know you're going to do it for the people. And they're going to have great testimony. So will I and Benny and people in our family. We will have great testimonies, Father God, because you did it. Because you are a father yes, who is the true father. Yes, it's yes, all yes. the plans of the enemy, the blueprints, the script, the demonic diamond, the demonic uh, 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 journal that he has, Father God. As it says in Psalms 126, it will go down the south stream and never be seen again. His plans will never prevail. They will fall to the ground and die in Yeshua's name. Oh, yeah. And I feel and invoke this prayer in the blood of Yeshua, Mashiach, yes. King Jesus Amen. Christ of Nazareth. So everybody who's listening to me who will give your daddy some glory and receive this prayer from the Lord and say, Lord, I believe you. I have mm-hmm. faith in you. Absolutely. I know you will do it for me. I no, know you will root me it. up. You will lift me up, not just you in my finances, life. but in all the readings of my life. Because your word says if I stay in your Torah and I have an intimate relationship with you and I follow thy commandments and love unto thy neighbor, Father God, and reverence you, you will do these things for me in Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you. Thank you, my Thank Lord. Thank you, Father God. You Thank you, my Lord. Yeah, that was a beautiful prayer. Um, I felt that. I felt the power of God. Um, Glory to God. Like, like, like I never felt it before. It, this is, this is awesome. Glory uh, to God. And and you know, this is what we need to most. We need to pray more. We really need to mm-hmm. pray more. And I wanted to, mm-hmm. I wanted to thank um, Pastor McGregory and any time that I, you know, every single time I come out, I said, maybe we should pray. He never says, <laughs> he never says, uh, uh, you know, I'm busy this today. No, he always, always, <laughs> what time, <laughs> what, what, what time, those are the, you know, that's, that's the reason why I love the people of God. Because they're servants. And Mm -hmm. you need to have the spirit of being a servant to your Mm -hmm. Lord. And that's when when I hear the word of my Lord, I shut up and I listen. Mm -hmm. And if I feel that the the, the, the Lord is talking and he's saying, Benny, do this, I'll do it. When I forgive my sister because we spent eight years without talking, without out of the blues. My the spirit of God said, Benny, go and hug your sister. And I said, but, 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 do it now. And I was like, I look at her and I hug her and she started crying. And, and, then, and then I start crying and then I kiss her and I start hugging her. And my mom, she started crying too. Everybody started crying. 
because uh -huh. that was the forgiveness. <laughs> that was the power of forgiveness that yes. my Lord, the Holy Ghost, put in my heart. Because yes. you know, we, let's 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 do this. so. Let me put it this way: My Lord told me that uh, in order to be free, you got to forgive yourself. <laughs> That's and right. In, in order to forgive yourself, you have to also forgive everybody, even your biggest mm -hmm. enemies. And you notice mm -hmm. that I even praying for the people who attack me. And mm -hmm. I'm doing it mm -hmm. because it's, it's basically something that you carry in your heart. You carry it. And when I, whenever I forgive and I pray for my enemies, I feel mm -hmm. very light. I feel like freedom. And you guys need to do the same thing. You need to forget and forgive. When you forgive, yeah. you forget. And a lot of people has a lot of problem by forgiving. We think, oh yeah, yeah, no, mm -hmm. I forgive you. No, you really need to mean it. Forgive and forget. Yeah. Okay? Because that's the Holy Spirit talking. And I really appreciate yeah. that uh, that you come out, uh, that you that you that you spend more time than what I ask you to spend because. I wanted my just to listen to you because let me just tell you something. I told you, I got people going homeless. I got people that don't have food in the tables. They they cannot they, they cannot make money to put food on the table for their kids for themselves. And while the economy going sky high, on the roof, mm -hmm. on the top of, and I see a lot of people in need. I was like, w what's going on? And it's frustrated, you know. So that's what I wanted to bring God into this. That I wanted to bring somebody. And you know what? I Last night, I was thinking about that. There was no mm -hmm. coincidence that you called me in the morning. And you woke me up. Because I believe the power of God is bringing the message. Yeah, the Lord everybody. had me five, six days trying yes. to call you. <laughs> yes. And, 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 and you guys, it's the, that's the beauty of God, you know. He's telling you guys, hold on to it. Keep the faith strong. Keep it strong. I know many of you are in a very dire straight situation, critical situation. I already know it. But keep the faith strong, people. Keep it strong. Pray a lot. We've been doing a lot of prayer with Pastor McGregory. And I have, I know, um, I've been told that other churches are listening to my show. And they keep praying also. But we need to pray more Wait for our... Uh, yeah. <laughs> and pray, we need to pray and we also need to pray for our president. Okay? So now yeah. we know who's going to give the... We know who's going to give the uh, the announcement of the RB. It's not going to be the corrupted body. I've been telling you mm -hmm. guys. It's going to be mm -hmm. Donald Trump. He's mm -hmm. going to make the announcement. And it's going to make people very angry. Why? We don't know. But we remember that the prophecy says, people will say, why, why now? And just like the prophecies uh, Solomon said, there will be a lot of chaos. Chaos is confusion. Okay? And Lord said there's still people out here who, who may be listening to, to your show. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they still, you know, they could be listening because maybe I was on it and, you know, they were curious or whatever. Like a lot of my followers listen to it on YouTube. And some people still will not believe that it's a legitimate thing until it actually happens. And then there'll be much mourning and regret for some people because, you yep. know, they didn't act on it. Even if you only got yourself a $100,000 in that money. You, you're still good. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if that's all you could afford to get, if you just knew hearing about it, mm -hmm. and if that's all you can afford to get, then at least get that. That way you can have something. You uh, know what I mean? I saw, yeah. As a matter of fact, there was a study for some people, don't remember who were they, that said that 75% uh, of the people, average investment is $100. That's one hundred thousand really? dollars. And, yes. And how much does it cost to buy like a hundred thousand dollars? Uh, for for no, for a hundred dollars they give you a hundred thousand dinars. Oh wow! And I just said a hundred thousand. Yes, <laughs> yes. And 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 when, if they revalue, they potentially will have over three hundred thousand dollars. Yes. 
see? So yeah. that's what I'm saying. If that's yes. all you can afford to, to buy, yes. at least, you know, buy that, you yeah. know? So, yeah, it, this, and you know, for a lot of people, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guarantee you something. And I don't need to be a prophet to say this. What? When the car, when the RV happened, it's gonna, mm -hmm. it's gonna take us needed, in a way that you yeah. have no idea, and we all going wow. to go into our knees and we're gonna cry and we're gonna praise the Lord, the name of my Lord, our Savior, because it's gonna be so tremendous. It will change your life for the rest of your life. You're going to die remembering this <laughs> date. You're going mm -hmm. to die. Remember that the last thing, the the last memory, when you no, eat, you probably got that. Probably ain't gonna be the last memory because Daddy's about to do some serious stuff. That RV probably be faded. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you about to do. <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 this is this is this is gonna be tremendous for a lot of people. A lot of lives are gonna be changing. A lot of atheists mm -hmm. are gonna be converted. Yes, mm -hmm. a lot of atheists are gonna be converted. Okay. A lot of, yeah. even a lot of Jewish, I have a lot of Jewish people coming, uh, listen to my show. They're also going to be Glory converted. To God. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to be converted to Christianity. I got Muslims to listen to my show. And one, to one, one Muslim said, Benny, I may not agree with every Jews, everything you said, but I cannot stop listening to you. And I don't know why. And that's because... The Lord gave me a prophecy that many multitude of um, Muslims were going to come to him and a multitude of Catholics were going to find the truth out mm -hmm. and come to him. Yeah. So you speak in prophecy. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and, and when I see these people coming to me and they know that I, I, I even convinced anybody to be Christian. All right? You know that. Mm -hmm. you, I, haven't, I haven't even convinced anybody. I only tell... I ask him... I'm asking you, just look for the kingdom of God. That's the whole mm -hmm. crime that I do. When I tell you, don't, mm -hmm. lose, don't listen to the gurus. Don't listen to anybody. Mm -hmm. Just go to the mm -hmm. kingdom of God. And I, that's, that's that simple mission. And I'm being attacked viciously. And every single, mm -hmm. every single time that I get attacked is a blessing. Believe it or not. Because I get yeah, it. Yeah. I, uh, I remember... Uh, Prophet King Clement said that every time he said, whenever you get attacked, remember this word. He said, every time you attack me, you, you are getting closer to the to the promise of God. Yeah. Every yeah. time you attack, and every time me, you get attacked, a blessing is coming as well. Exactly. Like like everything's going okay for you, and then out of out of the blue, stuff just start going haywire. That's the enemy because he's trying to distract you from the blessing or miracle or deliverance, or breakthrough, or victory, or triumphant that's about to come. And many people, like if you could prophesy that you're going to get married, your spouse is coming, he could, he or she could just be ready to come, and the devil will do something to strike you, and you'll miss them. How many times people get up to go to church and get into an argument with a family member, or something happened, and they just decide not to go? It's an angel waiting right there at that church for you to come to give you that miracle. It could have been your deliverance day. It could have been a demon blocking you didn't even know and God would have delivered you from the demon but you let your emotions of the enemy messing with you stop you your husband could have been there how many times people were supposed to go certain places and something happened and they don't go they miss it so this is why whenever things start going chaos in your life and it has been like kind of tapered and calm all of a sudden stuff just start happening you get an attack one, God is drawing you near, and two, there is a blessing, deliverance, breakthrough, victory, triumph, which whatever you've been asking God for, he's about to give it to you. Because you got to say something, wherever there are children of God, there, there are children of the enemy. Wherever there's righteousness, there is wickedness. Wherever there is prayer and concession, there is wickedness to try to stand against it. Whenever God is about to bring a blessing, the enemy knows because he's in the second heaven. So everything comes down from God's heaven, past him. So he sees it, unless God blinds him from seeing it. But most of the time, God doesn't do that. He sees it, so he can't stop God from sending it, but he could come immediately to you, send a demon to you, and cause confusion and, and all kinds of stuff in your life to distract you. So when it comes, you will not be 
looking and paying attention and God will be standing there or the angel will be standing there waiting for you. And if they're not going to tap on your shoulder and say, hey, look, I'm here. No, they're going to take it and give it to somebody else. How many of you know God cannot take anything back that he releases as a blessing? He goes and seeks and look who else he can give it to and they will get a double fall, like it says in the Bible. So when you start seeing these crazy things happening in your life, you're getting all distracted. It, it's a blessing, and no and no matter what you're going through in life, if you're hungry, you, you know you 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 could be losing your house or whatever the case is. Somebody sick, you sick. You know you you have to keep your faith in God. There's a, a Psalms in the Bible, Psalm 41. That's for people who are languishing. That's for people who are ill. You know, um, there's songs, but there's like Psalms 126, and you feel like you're in bondage. There's Psalms 100 for you to sing and go to the courts of God. When you sing that song or you praise it, you're actually going to the courts of God. There's Psalm 73. There's Psalm 24 that talks about the King of Glory who's coming. I mean, so, like my class I'm having on the 23rd. Uh, for three weeks, I'm going to be teaching people how to use the Psalms and show them things that they didn't even recognize because that's what I use. I use the Psalms and I get much breakthrough, much blessings because I know how to use the Psalms. You just don't read them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so many things with the Psalms you can do. You can repeat some of those things to God because sometimes God has to be reminded of his own Torah word or his scepter word. You know, so many people don't know the secrets of the Psalms. People don't even know the secrets of the Bible. But God's word has much power. And when you use his word in your prayers to him, that makes him move even faster. And when you praise him with his words, that makes him move even faster. Because Apostle Paul said, praise gets you faster than even prayer does. Yeah. Prayer was second in Apostle Paul's Anna. Praise was first. Yeah. And fasting was third. Definitely, we need to we need to pray a lot, a lot. Um, so when this blessing comes out, we are ready spiritually. I've been telling you guys that you need to be prepared spiritually, spiritually mm -hmm. and mentally, because you will not know what to do with so much money. You won't. You write about that. You know, so you either look for the kingdom of God. Because the Holy Spirit is going gonna, is gonna to try to, he will not try, he will help you. That Spirit of God will help you yeah. to make the yeah. right decisions. Yeah. To make the right decisions. Don't forget to tell them the other things that he, the yeah. Lord had told me. He said that um, many people aren't going to keep their promises. Oh, the yeah. In churches and shelters. Remember yeah. that? I yes. You? Yes. Uh, uh, that the prophet was, was, was telling me that uh, many of you, We, many of you will not keep your promise to help the hungry, to help the poor, to help the lonely. And I've been guys telling you this, okay? You will not, many of you will not keep your promise. For those who are not going to keep your promise, my prophet told me that your fortune, your blessing is not going to last. What did I just tell you? What I've been telling you? In less than two years, your blessing and your money will be gone. Because God wants us to do a change in the world. This is the last change, people. This is the last chance. You either do something for our Lord or you're going to have to face Him. Okay? And some of you will keep your promise. For those who are going to keep your promise to help the hungry, to help the poor, to help the lonely, you will remain rich. You will remain with a blessing. But for those who, will, who do not and will not uh, keep your word, that's your, that's your destiny. That is your destiny. You will go bankrupt. I've been telling you, 98% of you will go bankrupt. And why? Because you're looking more into the greedy than to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And God is not looking for people who is greedy, who are greedy. God is looking for people with pure hearts, with humbleness. Humbleness. You need to be humble from the, from, from the very deep in your heart. You need to be humble. 
Humble means mm -hmm. that don't think yourself so above anybody. Always, always remember that you have a mission in this world. And if God is going to put that, me, uh, that blessing in your hands, you have the morality responsibility to make a difference in this world. You need to understand that the money from the, the wicked, from the, from the rich, the very rich people, will be transferred to you, to the poor people. Okay? And you need to make that difference. So, I'll leave it up to you because even the prophet said, and I said, my God, I've been saying this without even knowing. <laughs> you know, and, and, now, and now you see a, a prophet saying the same thing. So, keep your word. If you're going to really help my Lord, keep your word, guys, because if you're not, you're going broke. You're going to really, your money is not going to last. I told you, the enemy is going to attack you before the RB. He's already attacking you. During the RB. And after the RB. Why? Because he knows you. He's very lenient. There's a little tiny line between living righteousness and greedy. You need to be always, always, always remembering where you come from. And what are you going to do with my Lord? Mm -hmm. What is the mission in this world for you? You will not just be born and have all this luxury that you plan to do and not give one cent to the poor. No. If you're going to be blessed with this money, my Lord is going to test you. He's going to test you. He's going to test me. It's going to test everybody. Are you still there? Oh. Hello? Are you, I lost I you. Did. Yes. I I, oh, okay. yeah. It's okay. <laughs> I lost you for a minute. So, yeah. So, that's basically it, guys. That's basically it. We did an hour of the show. I want to thank um, uh, Prophet and Apostle Rosaline. Uh, Rosalind uh, Solomon for being with us. Right, Thank you so much yeah. for spending so much time. I, I, I right, only yeah. wanted to take I only wanted to take three minutes of your time because I wanted my people <laughs> to listen to you. And I and you, look, it went on an hour, and I wanna thank you for the bottom of my heart. Thank you so oh, much. You're for, welcome. You know, thank you for so much for being Glory with us. Glory to God. Yes. It is God that did yes. this. I'm telling you, every day for five, six days, he put you on my heart to get your address and send you the books. And then mm -hmm. 7 o'clock this morning, I'm working on stuff. He said, call Benny. I was like, Benny, but it's me all the time. I'm going to wait till 12. <laughs> yes. You know, in, in, in my heart, in my heart, believe it or not, guys. In my heart, I even told the prophecies. I said, I'm dist I'm being destroyed inside of me because of this. <sighs> all the people, Hello? all the people, oh. all the people are suffering right now. All the people are losing. They're going broke. They're going homeless. And mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's too much for me. It just... And I needed was like, I was like, going, so I don't know what should I do. And was like, and that was last night. Last night I was feeling that way. And now my Lord brought the prophet Solomon. And I was like, shock. Okay. I was a shock. She's very busy all the time. So there you guys. If you think that, that I'm not being affected, I am being affected right now. I am being affected in a way that you have no idea. Everybody going in chaos, in panic. Everybody's losing their home. Everybody's losing their apartment. They cannot even bring food on the table. A lot of people are dying because they need money to keep surviving because of the medicine is too much. A lot of people have cancer. They need extra strong medicines. Every single people have a different story to tell. But there's one story that will prevail among all the pain that you guys are going to go through. It's the story of, of your salvation. It's the story, the biggest miracle that my Lord and Savior has for all of you. It's the story of the RB 
and that big transfer of wealth that he is about to give it to you. That story will raise and delete all your pain and all your, your problems. They will be disappear overnight. Not because you're going to be filthy rich, but because you're going to be enlightened. You're going to be a new person. You're going to feel younger knowing that there's somebody that is about everything that is going to save you. That will, back, that will have your back and will rescue you. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you guys for coming so early to my show. I want to thank Prophet Solomon for the bottom of my heart for being with us. <laughs> thank you. And I want to thank you guys. Hang in there. Please hang in there. We're almost there, guys. Believe it or not, we're almost there. Keep the faith strong. Keep it so strong that you can... If you wanted to take a fasting, if you can't fast, take it. Today is Sunday. Go back to church. Glorify the name of my Lord. Glorify Him. 24-7. And you all are going to be the biggest witness of the biggest miracle that is about to happen. Have a wonderful night. A wonderful day. And I'll see you Tuesday or next week. I have more mm -hmm. news to tell you. I still have not verified it. For now, God bless you all. And I'll leave you with this song. Because it's only one name. It's only one name that is beautiful. It's the beautiful name of Jesus. God bless you all. See you around. I'll see you.